everybody, how's it going? And a big thank you to Leah for having me on board her channel as she goes through the uh, filmography of the gladiatorial combatant turned thespian, Dwayne The Rock Johnson. It is an absolute pleasure to have you here, Dan. In our first ever collaboration video, we are reviewing the 2008 film Get Smart. I can't help thinking I would have got this film if I had seen the 1960s TV show. But as a remake in film form, it should be able to stand alone. So therefore, I got Dan on board. So a couple of days ago, Leah put out a call for anyone who uh, was familiar with the TV show, Get Smart. And this is one of those instances where me being kind of older than most people who uh, tend to do this YouTube stuff comes in handy because I grew up on the show. Uh, it was groundbreaking stuff at the time. Ratings wise, it wasn't like a phenomenon, uh, but look, it was, was a huge hit amongst audiences and very influential as far as a lot of modern day comedy stuff goes. So let's talk about the movie. For an action comedy spy film, it has one of the most uninteresting openings for that genre. But the film really doesn't improve from there. At 30 minutes, it does wake up just that little bit by delivering us a skydive sequence that I'd like to think did inspire Mission Impossible Fallout. You know, this movie copped a lot of flack from critics and stuff. Uh, I didn't mind it. Maybe I was biased because I loved the TV show so much and I thought the casting was on point. I thought if anyone was going to pick up the mantle of Don Adams, uh, you know, being such an iconic character of Maxwell Smart, um, Steve Carell wasn't a bad choice. Basically, anytime you put Anne Hathaway in a movie, I'm pretty much going to watch it. The film has an interesting cast. We have Steve Carell, who is an Oscar nominee. We've got Oscar winner Anne Hathaway. I mean, granted, they got those Oscar titles after the film. But the point I'm making is back in 2008, they were very talented. Yet it just wasn't enough to keep me out of the coma. And as far as Dwayne Johnson's uh, character in this, look, you know, he was just kind of you know, your typical superhero secret agent that Maxwell Smart looked up to and idolised and, you know, it kind of was the catalyst because Maxwell Smart in the film wasn't a field agent yet and so, you know, that was kind of his inspiration. So, um, yeah, look, you know, it wasn't like a starring vehicle for The Rock, but, um, you know, look, again, he was fine. I think the cast do what they can with a pretty terrible trying too hard to be funny script but seriously what was the point of terry cruz's character the award for underusing a very funny actor goes to this film and when you consider the spectrum of tv shows turned into movies which let's face it most of the time they are either kind of poor or they just outright suck. Um, look, I thought this one was okay. The only problem was that there was no way that they could recapture that lightning in a bottle that was the original TV show. Because when that came out in the 60s, you know, people hadn't really seen anything quite like it before. I mean, it was, well, you know, we were kind of new to the James Bond franchise at that point, and this was a send-up of that kind of stuff. I mean, this was taking that format or that genre and turning it into a comedy, and uh, yeah, there was something a bit different at the time. None of the scenes make sense to the plot. It feels like they had a bunch of ideas and they just made them into little tiny sketches playing for laughs or trying to play for laughs and added them around the story. I mean, such as the dance sequence. As much as I love a dance sequence in a movie, what was the point? Or we've got the entrapment homage unless that scene is in the TV show first, doing it before Catherine Zeta-Jones. I mean, I do think the entrapment sequence really did show how much Steve Carell is an intellectual comedian rather than a physical comedian, you know, with the likes of uh, Jim Carrey or, you know, going all British on your Lee Evans. He doesn't have that physicality in terms of comedic style. So it kind of caused me to think that he was miscast in this role. And another thing that the TV show did really well was having a female main character who was actually more 
adept at the job than the male. Uh, in this case, we had Agent 99, played by Barbara Feldon. And um, yeah, even by season four, uh, she and Maxwell Smart uh, are married and have kids. And it was the first time a female character in any sitcom uh, was able to keep their job after becoming a mother. So it did a lot for, uh, you know, being sort of pro-women's rights, I guess. Unfortunately, that aspect never translates in the film. Anne Hathaway's character is way more confident than the main character, yet she is never celebrated for it. Even the poster of the movie has Steve Carell's tie covering her face. And then, with no true build-up to the relationship or lack of chemistry, she becomes the love interest of the main character. We had all these really cool things like the shoe phone and all these gadgets that were kind of silly, but, you know, they just in the context of the show, they fit in so well. And again, you know, that was all stuff that was new to us, whereas by now, being that that show was such a big influence on the, you know, on, on comedy spoof films and stuff, I mean, the show was uh, created by Mel Brooks, who of course, you know, is a spoof master. But by the time we get to the movie, you know, we'd kind of seen it all before. It had been done so much. And so the movie did feel like a watered down version of the TV show as such. So I think the big question here for you, Dan, is TV show? Or film. So look, overall in terms of TV show versus movie, like I said, I am a fan of both. Um, although I only own season one of the TV show, I really must get around to getting the other four seasons at some stage. Um, yeah, look, the, the TV show was a clear winner in this case, but I didn't think the movie was as bad as a lot of people think. You know, it was okay, it was passable entertainment, um, it had some laughs, um, yeah, it just wasn't that great. I don't think I have the energy to talk about this film for much longer. Yeah, that's, that's what I thought about this film. Get smart, let's just say, they missed it by that much. So, once again, a really big thank you to Leah for having me on board her channel. Uh, look, if you're watching this and you haven't subscribed to her channel, what are you doing, you knuckleheads? Get down there, hit that subscribe button. Um, yeah, like, she does such a great job with her channel. Definitely deserves a bigger audience. You should also go check out Dan's channel at Movie Talk with Dan Jensen. The link is in the description box. Now it's your time to pop your thoughts and feelings in the comment box below. Like the video and don't forget to check out other Dwayne Johnson reviews during 31 Days of Dwayne Johnson. And also, uh, she's been approaching a lot of other YouTubers to do these collaborations. Uh, and there's still a lot of Dwayne The Rock Johnson movies to go. So if you want to get on board, get in touch with her and, yeah, do something like this. Get, just, you know, have some fun with it. Just, just do it.